You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may on Twitter the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale Grace's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Oh, a possible thumbnail. And take the lead, she does. With our project at least underway, Grace, for the most part, falls back into her usual behavior. Quiet and resolute, as if laboring alone is her actual preference. If anything is surprising, it's just how hardworking and thorough she's become. Marion would be proud of Grace's determination, even if it's simply to tow her boyfriend around. Such is our new routine. Every day I arrive to find Grace using her strength to demolish broken pieces. After swift but romantic greetings, I'm always asked to pile up the rubble. We'll have a celebratory bonfire when she's done. Ah, I can, har I can already smell the roasting mackerel. Oh, oh nice. Each morning, I also spot fresh replacement washed up on shore. I don't ask where they've come from, but I suspect nearby ports may be missing some materials. Days stretch into weeks, and the Kelpie, and its promise of rest and relaxation, begins to take shape. Who knew a carefree life would be so much work? Oh wow, that's cute. Fashioning a new mast is the most difficult part, but Grace's size makes raising it into place look easy. I see her hard work paying off not just in tangible accomplishments, but also in her attitude. Since my return home, I've watched Grace go from shy to boisterous, to finally landing somewhere in between, keeping her isolation while developing a strong sense of self. Every time I talk to her, I know I'm speaking with a shrewd, independent woman, and nothing proves this better than her new side job. After she made good on her promise to the fishmonger, the arrangement evolved into a loose business relationship. Grace provides the fish, and Douglas provides a cut of the sale. I'm thankful they've patched things over, because ever since Douglas took Marion to the church picnic, the two have begun openly making appearances together. There are whispers that they might even be in love. There are whispers about me as well. I've become an idler and a, rec and a recluse, they natter. A sad, lonely veteran best left alone. Gran works hard to discredit these rumors, even if my absence speaks louder than the few words of an old woman. At least Gran knows I'm in a relationship. Nonetheless, when I return home tired and withered from labor, I suspect she, m I suspect she must worry. I tell her not to. My time at the lock is spent in all fashions. One moment is romantic, the next tedious or strenuous. The exercise is mental as well as physical, rarely calming but always invigorating. Oh wow, that's really coming together, Oh, As the weather warms, the Kelpie begins to look seaworthy. Grace and I alternate between repairing the ship and taking dips to refresh ourselves. I begin to picture this as my permanent lifestyle, grueling work mixed with fleeting relaxation. In so many ways it feels... real. So very similar to any life on land. Two people in love striving to make a life at home together. Ours is just a different type of fairy tale. Things have stabilized since the early days of Grace's transformation. At first, I welcome the slower, tranquil, pa tranquil pace of our swims. The chance is just to be in peace. But as our quiet moments together stretch out, I begin to find something unsettling in the silence. All the words left unsaid. It's been ages since our last disagreement, despite the source of friction never truly being resolved. A subject we've both been avoiding out of respect to one another. This reticence. I wonder if it isn't straining us both. Our conversations begin to feel rote, never straying from topics dull or safe. Each day, each swim, with grace repeats itself. I feel her in on happenings in town, and although I can tell she doesn't always care, she listens. Eyes open, ears up, attentive. In turn, Grace shares her adventures and experiences, which despite my best efforts I can't really understand. Most times I'm left confused and envious. The zacks of soaring beneath the water aren't in the cards for me. Never will I encounter the creature she describes, nor the sensation of gliding through seaweed faster than running through a wheat field. It too is a mystery, one I can't solve. Oh. Then on most days, after we've relayed all and played to exhaustion, Grace dies underwater without a word, only to reappear a few hours later like nothing had happened. I don't begrudge her these brief departures, but as the season draws on, the length of each dive grows noticeably longer. One day I say my peace. Grace, can we talk? I'm still holding a caulking rope as I look to as I look to see if she's even around. Thankfully I hear splashing. I was just about to take a break. I'm gonna go sick my scales for a while. Good lord, she's tall. When I hear frustration in Grace's voice, I set down the rope and meet her at the waterline. I could use a break myself. May I join you? She hesitates, and a sinking feeling hits that I'm not invited. 
It's alright if you prefer some time to yourself. Is something wrong? Oh no, these big clumsy hands just drive me red sometimes. She wiggles her webbed fingers and sighs. At this stage, the work has become less strenuous and more tedious. Recalking the whole waterproofing the deck seams, replacing the bunks, these finer jobs aren't easy for her, I know. But I suspect something else is at play here. I must up the courage to ask what's been eating at me for so for some time now. Grace, where do you go when you disappear? Her enormous body shrinks a little, and I feel over and I feel already guilty for asking. It wasn't my intent to make her feel ashamed. Well, all sorts of places, really. My old haunts, good fishing grounds. Sometimes I even go outside the lock just for a change of scenery. I suspect it as much. The call of the sea is strong. It reminds me of something Alana said at the beginning of this whole affair. You think it's an instinct, a side effect of your form. Instinct? Malcolm, you make me sound like a wild beastie. It's not an animal impulse, at least I don't think so. They're just my happy places. A lump forms in my throat. I'm not her happy place. I don't dare speak it lest I upset her. She can't mean it that way, can she? Grace must be able to read my pain. I wanted it to be a surprise, but I've also been looking for something that can help us. What do you mean? She frowns as her brow furrows. I start to think she looks guilty, but her words clear up any ambiguity. Have you ever felt awkward when we're together, recently? My instinct is to lie, to assure her I've never felt better with things between us. Anything to get her to stay, to stop taking off. But my gut makes me tell the truth, as always. Yes, but I haven't known what to say about it. Maybe what you're searching for is right here. I want to speak it aloud, but I can't. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been leaving you. Don't, please don't ever think I don't want to be with you. You don't need to apologize. I feel like I'm the cause. The soul slowing down of our relationship. It's taking a toll, I know. I reach out to cradle her face. On me too. She holds my gaze and allows her serve a small but noticeable smile. Malcolm, I don't need you to get naked to have a good time. She winks and then frowns again. I'm serious. I'm here for you. For Malcolm. You know I love you for more for more than your body. I hope you can say the same. And what a body it is. We both let out laughs so light they disappear in the breeze. It's not just about intimacy. I want that to happen. I, th I think of it all the time. So do I. But that's not what's been bothering me. I, I promise you. I start to wonder if my silence on the issue has been part of the problem too. I'm still sorry I haven't been communicating. It's hard with all the work we're doing. Then, not having anything new to share with you. No adventure around the corner. I to remind Grace that my life revolves around her. Everything I'm doing now is to ensure I'll be by her side. Perhaps not yet, but soon. You've given up so much for me. For us, my heart has grown tenfold just from knowing you, Malcolm. So why do you take off every day? Why do you leave without saying a word? Are you afraid I'll be hurt or upset that you need a break? Honestly, it's your secrecy that is, hard, that is hurting me. There, I said it. I'm hurt. Hurt that she can't share a huge part of her life with me. I apologize, Malcolm. I just didn't think you would understand. You need time alone. That's normal. I do too. But it won't work with us if you're not willing to open up more. Talk to me. Malcolm, this whole time we've been working, toiling at something that will take you away from your responsibilities, our families even. It's a constant reminder that I'm... different. I always have been. Now even more. I'm doing my best to keep my hands off you, trying to distract myself with what I've always done to cope with when I'm anxious. You're isolating. It sounds like the grace I remember. Yes. She hangs her head, but only for a moment. But I've also been thinking. I want to help. I want to take you away on our own adventures and not have you fretting over anything you've left behind. And not just you. I want to help my sisters, to help Agnes. She starts backing into the water. I know a way, but I'm scared to tell you. I don't want to let you down. Tell me what? You didn't worry about disappointing me. In fact, Grace's confident, cagey behavior leads me to believe it's not disappointment she's worried about, but disapproval. She's already begun to swim off as she normally does in the afternoon. So much for getting her to open up. She's backpedaling, or rather backstroking. It will take me a few days, Malcolm, but I'll be back with a solution, I promise. Watch for the beacon. I'll take a break from the ship. I scream out to her. The days? Trust me, Malcolm. Everything will be better for all of us. I love you. I start to reply in turn, but she's gone. Back underwater, swimming away at full speed, and leaving me lost and confused. What began as an apology, an olive branch to repair any damage developing as we remained reticent. It's turned into her abandoning me, rushing off into the unknown. Unknown to me, at least. Grace has a plan. As a man who loves her the most, I should trust her. I want to trust her, but I don't know what to believe anymore. Why can't we just have an open conversation? What is she hiding? 
As I watched the waters wake, which that was what she left this is what that she has left behind, my heart sinks deeper and deeper. Was that it for now? Oh, okay. Maybe there's more? Roommate, oh my god. Oh my lord. Hmm, I'm sipping some crack and rum. Roommate is making steaks with mashed potatoes, so Neri is going to be eating very well tonight. Alright. I will, Malcolm. You seem distracted. As I help Gran down from the horse-drawn cart, I have to pull my eyes away from the lock. I'm fine, Gran. You're talking about Rabina's boys. Yes, scoundrels, the both of them. Magitite suspects they're the ones rolling the cows over in the Lachi's field at night. The drone of Gran's gossip resumes, filling my ears as it has this the whole way back from the market. As I start to unload our purchases, my gaze drifts back to the coast. I told myself I wouldn't dwell on it, but I can't help but wonder when or increasingly if Grace will return. Almost a week has passed, and there's still no sign of her. I can't shake the feeling that even if she hasn't left me for good, there's a reason, a bad reason, she's not home yet. You know, Maggie and the rest of the Whist Guild are so glad to see you coming to town again. They were worried about you. As a matter of courtesy, Gran often disguises her own worries as the misgivings of others. There was never a need for worry. Once I finish repairing the ship, I should be free to make appearances in town more often. In order to satisfy Gran's growing concern, I had decided to share another part of what had, what had been keeping me busy all this time. Fixing the Kelpie. Part of me wonders if I ought not to have taken a break as Grace suggested. With her gone, losing myself back to back into her work has been a welcome distraction. I wish you had told me about your sailboat sooner. Oh, how your grandfather loved to go out on the lock. He would have been so proud to see you now. Save the praise until after the maiden voyage. It's been so long since those days, I may not remember how to sail. Oh, you'll do just fine. And once you, once you have your sea legs, maybe you can take Grace for a cruise. You know how much she loves the water. I nod. Do I ever. Say, when you are planning to bring say, when are you planning to bring her by for dinner? I never get a peep out of you. Even Marion has been quiet about her sisters of late. I turn toward the empty lock and answer as honestly as possible. Well, you know, Grey, she can she can be quite solitary. A flash catches my eye, a glint coming from the shore. Could it be? Too solitary for her own good, if you ask me. I miss the days when she ran over when she would run over to tell your grandfather the new joke she'd heard. Always a scamp that one. That was when I was away. Aye, I saw her more then. Marion and Jessie, too, but I suppose that was at the beginning of everything. Years ago now. So hard to imagine where the time has gone. Treasure Seekers. Huh. Your grandfather loved that girl. I pause. My focus split between listening to Grand's nostalgia and watching for another, pay for another blink of light. And you love her, too. Of course, but I don't like her seclusion. I want to see more of her, of you and her together. And she needs to help poor Marion with the farm work. Build some muscle in that tiny frame of hers. Gran, Grace is just going through a lot right now. We all are, but... There it, it flashes again. The beacon, it must be her. But you know what? I think everything will turn out just fine. Of course it will. We have each other, and you have... Oh, goodness! My tight embrace catches Gran off guard. Your dear Gran, I'll be right back. I just need to go. Check on the ship. Malcolm, what's gotten into you? What about the groceries? And Hazel is still hitched to her cart. I stop myself before I run down the hill. Ah, yes. Hastily fiddling at Hazel's fastener, I silently remind myself I've waited for this I've waited this long for this moment. It can wait a tiny bit longer. Oh my. Oh, I can't wait to see what's going on. My heart races, my body sweats head to toe when I finally reach the shore. Sure enough, the glass vase is perched atop the beacon. Oh. Malcolm, there you are. Did you miss me? I stare at the pointy-eared mischief maker I call my girlfriend. She looks the same, unharmed, joy-filled. I don't know whether to jump into Grace's arms or admonish her for leaving so abruptly. Ooh, excuse me. Of course I missed you. You left me out to dry. Well, I know you prefer being dry after all. Hey, I missed you too. Grace grins and opens her arms. I can't be mad at her. My heart yearns for her, even in her most impetuous state. I enter her embrace, inhaling the salt. Our mouths find each other, and we kiss as if she's been overseas for months. It certainly felt like it. Just tell me where you're going next time. If I knew for certain, I'd have told you. I was out searching, looking for a wreck. Another wreck? Grace, there's still work to do on this one. Not that kind of wreck. More like the type you read about in kids' books. Grace winks and guides me to the shoreline, where I find a wet wooden crate. I blink. She seems very proud of herself. 
What is this? Another collection of your knickknacks. Why don't you open it and see? I kneel in front of the chest and see writing in what appears to be German. A claw marked lock has been opened by brute force. Trembling, I open the lid. Oh my god! I don't believe it! Grace squeals in delight. A sound I never expected could come from such a huge body. You'd best believe it, Malcolm! We're rich! Sunken treasure! I thought this sort of thing was more myth than reality. But again, I'm talking to someone who looks like she swam right out of the legends of old. I've told you before. You wouldn't believe how much stuff ends up on the seafloor. These gems weren't easy to find, though. I don't doubt it. It must be like searching for a needle in a haystack. This chest, though. It doesn't look that old. Do you think whoever this gold belongs to will want it back? I think no one needs to know. What is lost to the sea belongs to the sea. To me. Grace, I don't think it works like that. It's alright. I found this chest on a submarine. She beams as if that explains everything. And? Malcolm, think! Submarines just don't go around carrying bars of gold willy-nilly. This is clandestine gold. I bet money, uh, I bet money, a whole treasure's worth that it's on no one's ledger. Look! As Grace been reading spy novels, she lifts a heavy bar with eye with ease, turning it over to reveal a stamp that reads, Kaiserek. Alright. I admit the Kaiser's in... I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Alright, y'all, thank you so much for watching. I am ready to eat. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!